Hey, I'm Bryce Vine, and this is On Canvas. So I'm gonna make a self-portrait here, is uh, the assignment I've been given. I had an awful croissant on the train. And then, uh, and then we had salads from, from Pratt. Pratt. It's one of my favorite places to go, but only in, in the UK because everywhere else it doesn't taste as good. Somewhere the ear goes like right around that part of the face, usually. Drew Barrymore is Basically, I was trying to write a song that didn't focus on like the appearance of somebody that you have like a strong affection towards. And I hadn't heard many songs in a long time that really talked about who the person was instead of like how beautiful they are physically. So that was the challenge that I tried to do at first, but then it kind of evolved into like just this sexy romantic setting at this weird Wes Anderson like hotel called the Suwaro which I've learned now is pronounced Sowaro. Uh, yeah, so that was the whole point of that. And then Drew Barrymore was just kind of the person that was iconic enough to mention um, as like that kind of girl. You know, she's sweet, she's sincere, she's funny. She's kind of a badass. She has all those qualities that I find attractive. So far I look like kind of like the Halloween pumpkin version of myself. Mostly Japanese cartoons from the 90s. Probably is what I naturally gravitate towards as an artist. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to trace Dragon Ball Z cartoons. I thought it was the coolest thing you could possibly do. And then I would cut them out and make them little poor man's action figures. And here we go. I've been told online that my nose is rather noticeable, so let's see. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. So far, so good. Now let's add a little color to this equation. Oh, wait, I'm gonna make a neck. You have the beginning stages of your own Bryce Vine. What I'm doing right now, if you can't tell, is I'm trying to make this more lifelike by adding colored Sharpie. I'm avoiding the paint because I'm scared to pick it up. I'm scared to pick up the paintbrush. No, I think the process of making music gets more challenging over time. If you've had any kind of success at it, because then there's like a level that you have to stay above or like, or no one cares or they think that it's not special. It's like you have the hit, right? And then you, you either make something very similar in style to that song, or you go completely AWOL and do something else that no one expects, but you can't make a worse song that's different also. <laughs> like you can't go below where you just were or, or people will just stop caring. So it gets more and more complicated. Like I listen to lots of different kinds of music, always have, like I've always been excited about hearing a song that doesn't sound like any other song. I grew up on punk rock, like the first time I ever played music live was in a punk rock band that I started in my high school band. I met this little lesbian chick in my journalism class and we both just talked every day about how the teacher didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. And we were like, hey, I was like, I play guitar. She's like, I play drums. So it was just us two and we started a band together. and. Uh, and so I listened to like Rancid and Operation Ivy and then I moved on to Less Than Jake and then ska music with like Real Big Fish and then I started listening to Bob Marley and the Wailers. It's just like it just turned into this spiral of everything that kind of worked around punk. Just like the raw energy of it was so exciting to me. Um, and then I heard How Do You Want It by Tupac. And that was the first time in my life I was like, oh, rap is the coolest music of all time. There's just no way about, around it. Like Fella Cootie is another one of my favorites. Frank Ocean, um, Jamie T, 
Skepta's great. His music videos are like all art. Okay, I'm gonna try to do paint. Just cause I really, really wanna use this thing. The first time I ever performed a show, it was in, with, with a punk band in a backyard of one of my friend's houses on some like a grass lawn and I was terrified. It was terrified. There was like maybe seven people there and I like put my hood up and just like played and kept my head down. I had no confidence at all, which is so funny because now it's like the only place in my life where I constantly feel confident like and excited. But when I started, no, it was, it was terrifying. But it was nice to have a band around me. I think that's what I like. I liked the, the companionship, like having people that had your back no matter what. Like me and all the people in the band, we didn't even hang out in school. We only got together on the weekends to play music and it made our friendship even more special. Like the lesbian girl just got married this summer and I was one of the groomsmen. That would have never happened if I just hadn't talked to that girl and she became my drummer. It's just crazy how life works. Well, let's see what yellow and brown make. Maybe they make my skin color. There was one show in, I don't know if this is the most memorable, but it's one of the most because I remember it. This kid who I still, I remember his name. He comes to all the shows that he can come to. His name's Callaway Mills. And he's had a lot of trouble in his life. Like he's been in jail already. I don't know if you want me to tell anybody that, but I did. And just, he has like a lot of emotional problems and, and just, and he recognizes himself as a mess, but he loves to come to the shows because they make him happy. And uh, I saw him in the front row at a sold out show in Columbus, Ohio. And he, he was singing all the words as he always does. So I like, it was the first time I ever just decided to like throw somebody the mic, like literally just throw it out to the crowd and hope that he caught it. And he caught it. And this guy who like, he was by no means the most outgoing person. He, the moment the mic touches his hands, he turns around to the crowd and starts singing all the words to them. Like, I just told you, it took me years to build up that kind of confidence to do that. And this guy just does it to an, like a crowd of 900 people. And I'm just sitting there on stage, like not even looking at the crowd, just looking at him like, and he sings all the words, then gets up on the barricade and sings the rest of the song and has the whole crowd do this. And it was so cool to see somebody like that in their normal life who cannot get it together, completely control a room. Like something, and something that took me years to figure out how to do. That was epic. Boom, motherfucker. I feel like people look immediately approachable if they wear this bright of blue. Like they don't look like someone that's going to steal from you or try to beat you up. They look like... Hey, if you need someone's help with math homework. This has become fun. At first it was stressful and now it's become fun. Oh my God, no, this looks like poo. No, I just made poo. I made the poo color. There's no chance of starting over, right? It's too late now. Oh no, this is so gross now. Ah. Whatever. My most favorite thing about touring are the shows. Um, meeting like all these people from all these different places and eating at new restaurants. That's like the most fun. I feel like travel is just an excuse to talk about where you've eaten and what you ate. It makes you feel like part of the culture. It's like the easiest way to understand a new culture and the quickest way or at least get like a piece of it. So that's always fun. The worst thing about touring, it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> it's pretty, it's like just a very exhausting thing. You're always moving, you're always traveling, and the few hours of sleep that you do get are weirdly restless. And then you are in cars 90% of the time. Like the show, of tour is like 10% of the entire tour. And the rest is just getting to the show, setting up for the show, sound checking for the show, meeting people, talking to fans, playing the show finally, meeting people again, talking to fans, going to bed. And so funny how many people think that like, it's like it was in for Kiss in the 70s, where it's just, yeah, we just do blow all the time, and we just have 
bitches everywhere. It's like, dude, not in my experience. In my experience, it's a lot of, if I don't go to bed now, I won't even get three hours of sleep. My favorite thing about London is an English breakfast. It's nothing better and you can't make it right in the States and you can't get it anywhere. It makes me feel at home in a weird way. It's so like baked beans, blood pudding, ham, and sausage. It's just perfect. And eggs, it's just perfect. Just drink. <laughs> we go out to bars, we have a pint. We talk to local people and it's fun. It's like one of the, and, and everything looks like you're in London. Some places it's like, oh, the, like when I went to Sydney, Australia, it's a beautiful place, but I also could be in Florida. You know, London is so distinct. Like the architecture, even the cars, the taxis, I'm like watching go by and I'm like, these are fucking adorable. Um, so yeah, it just like, it really feels like you're somewhere new. Same with Paris. Okay, well, I'm pretty much done. I think, I guess I can like add a little more poop color here. Painting is difficult. It's, like, it's definitely not an art that I quite understand. Well, it's supposed to be a nose ring. It kind of looks like a booger. I'm spent. My masterpiece is complete. Hey, I'm Bryce Vine and this was On Canvas with Bryce Vine. Call the museums, tell them to start auctioning or bidding, whatever, I don't know. I do music, so.